This is the Kia Niro plug-in hybrid. The Kia Niro comes in three versions. It comes with uh, the standard hybrid version, which cannot be plugged in and has a smaller battery. And then this one, the plug-in hybrid, which has a bigger battery and can be charged from the socket. And then the fully electric Niro. So, you know, it's weird because I almost never review the hybrid cars. The, the first and only car I did review before this one was the i8. And I'm not planning on reviewing many plug-in hybrids because I believe that they are bullshit. Yeah, almost like, uh, almost like um, a hydrogen car. But uh, the reason why I test this one is to uh, show you guys why you should buy the electric one. Uh, there are hundreds, of, okay, maybe not hundreds of reasons, but there are many reasons why the, the, the electric one is much better than this. So if you watch this video, I will show you all the differences. There are, of course, a few advantages with the plug-in, I mean, the, the fossil version. But um, we are now blocking the charging station like a true, uh, true fossil car. Uh, I will take uh, a trip and do various tests and it will, this will just be um, just one video. Yeah, I'm not going to split in several videos. But you see that the plug-in hybrid is uh, more or less like the, um, the pure electric one you've seen in Korea. Uh, there are a little bit of differences, for instance, in the front here. Uh, the light here is a bit different. The styling here. Yeah, so I'm not sure which one you prefer, but uh, I prefer the electric one, of course. <laughs> but, um, alright, and then the back level is showing the back. Well, okay, you have the fuel fuel uh, lid there, and that this one is for charging. Uh, it seems like it only has 3.7 kilowatt onboard charger. So it just says plug in in the back there, that's it. Yeah, all right, uh, so let's get the uh, cracking then. Oh, I uh, it was unlocked, of course, yeah. Now I have to unlock. And then, uh, you see here, by the way, uh, this is pretty uh, pretty standard. It looks just like the, the electric version, but that's, for, that's where it ends. Okay, this one is also just like electric, but for some reason, I don't know why, I asked Kia. Uh, the back here has no power outlet, no shuku for some reason. And let me just try to sit in the back, uh, get an impression of how it is. Ah, all right, all right. Um, it feels more or less like the electric version. I also feel like the seating height, it's like the electric one. Um, yeah, this is also the same, very much alike. Uh, you see we have plenty of uh, leg room here but it seems like uh, the seat yeah you know what there is like a, a, a bigger gap here under the seat so you can you can poke your legs there to stretch your legs on long trip um, I bet the battery eats up some space oh by the way you still have heated seats for the back here of course in the electric version there is this do you see this room here I can put I can put my fist in here. This room uh, has batteries in, there's some, probably some modules are poking up here. So of course in the fossil car, you don't have that. The, the battery is in the trunk, I will show you soon. Let me just poke under here. Okay, it has like flat-ish floor. Let me check something. Yeah, it's like 16.5 centimeters. So that's only half, a centimeter uh, taller than uh, than the, the fully electric. The fully electric has uh, 16 centimeters. How the heck is that possible? Huh? Let me look look under here. Uh, okay. So it has some kind of just just some plastic piece here, and then you have the the exhaust under there. Um. All right. And this is a trunk, it looks just like the electric one, except for a few details. Uh, this hump seems to also be the same, if I remember correctly, yes. The corner had a smaller hump, but you see here, uh, the securing hooks are mounted on this, this uh, plate here, and then you can remove this cover. Uh -huh. Let me take it off. Now, okay, see, you can completely take off this cover, so that's, that's a bit weird, so you, you secure the cargo on on this one. Uh, 
and here now that there's a difference here because we have this this battery pack it's as 8.9 kilowatt hour lithium polymer ba battery in here and uh, this part here is like some of the safety stuff right uh, and I tried to remove it but it doesn't seem like it can be removed so you see here there's something holding it there um, so that's that's actually a big disappointment that means basically means that the space under the trunk in the plug-in hybrid cannot be utilized it has oh you know what what is this is that is that cooling is that active cooling huh yeah but uh, in the electric version remember i opened this one and it was like a little bit you could take out and then if you uh, unscrew some uh, stuff you can even take out more and there's like a an option where you can buy this i guess this extra kit uh, from the factory and then you get more space in the trunk because most evs you know they have this nice space here under the trunk just like the leaf and um, ampere e yeah but here it's like this <laughs> And then inside the car here, it's much like the electric one. You see they have the same air brands. Alright, let's fire up the car. Okay, confirm. Yeah, same same startup sound. Uh, the, the instrument cluster is slightly different. In the electric version, uh, you will see the speed here in digitally. Now it's just an analog gauge, which is crap. And this one, it just shows you charge and power put. So basically, like... 70% of the instrument cluster is being used by something that isn't, doesn't give you that much information. Yeah, you only have this tiny screen here in the middle here that can display various things. For instance, you know, energy flow, lane keep assist, and then you can change some settings here. Actually, let me, there was one, what is it again? Uh, yeah, there's, there's no, actually, lights. <laughs> There is no ambient light here either, so it's like, I feel like I'm getting now a, a stripped down, like a, a one one trim lower car, but this is the highest trim in the fossil car, but you, for instance, you don't get LFA here, you only get this one, which is um, Elcas. Elcas does a pretty poor job of uh, keeping the lane, you see that over there, it kind of appears there. Uh, LFA is much better than Elcas. And also see here, you have this gear selector, right? <laughs> Looks like really old-fashioned. Uh, at least in uh, in electric, you have that knob you can turn around. Uh, and also, you see how little space you have for uh, for putting your stuff here. Uh, this is also a bit weird. Like why this one uh, is you know further in front, but here they they made a pretty big wall for some reason. What if the passenger? wants to put something here they should have at least made it symmetric uh, and here you're just okay you have the wireless charging here for the phone Let me just show you here uh, this is a Samsung S7 so it's not that big it will fit there but there is not much space for a bigger phone so um, I'm not sure if you can charge this now you can't charge in that direction so you have to charge it like this so this one seems to have the same limitation as uh, Kona uh, limit on how many uh, how big the, the the phone can be and here by the way the advantage is though that you have two 12 watt outlets <laughs> yeah uh, the electric one only has one power outlet uh, but remember electric one has a big like console here op wide open space here you don't have that and also the cup holder here is oh man sorry for all that crap i have all the video equipment with me just show you here you just have this very simple standard cup holder uh very little space in the electric one you had much bigger room here and also here this one is the same as uh, the electric so but i feel like you get less space here yeah way less space also less tech if i show you here you see that one there this is a a manual park brake what that is so old-fashioned you know uh, the electric one has of course electric park brake and also the electric one has hill hole which this one doesn't have okay it has steering uh, steering wheel heater and uh, like uh, ventilated seats and all that but 
it's missing some nice feature that the electric one has. But all right, let's take it on the road then. All right, so I can choose between a uh, hybrid mode and electric mode. I guess electric mode is like the ninja mode. Yes, uh, let's go for the hybrid mode. Now I need that uh, extra electricity for uh, testing noise. So I brought the, the sound meter. So immediately it feels similar to the electric version until you start driving. So right now the engine is not running. Uh, let's try to hammer it. Let's see if I can trigger it to start. No, it didn't start either. And so now it's just using, it's in, in, I call it ninja mode, yeah, but you know what I mean. Um, so it's in pure electric mode. There's also a vest sound, just like uh, the, ooh, but oh, I have like very little uh, region here. But actually, you know what? I can see on the, um, on the charge, like the, the left gauge that, um, which shows you region or power output that you get very little region if you let off the pedal, which I don't like. I don't like that behavior, but it's just set to be like that. Uh, but if you brake, you activate more region, like on e-golf and, uh, and uh, Zoe. So at least, all right, it has strong region. Um, I mean, for, um, for efficiency, it's there. But for convenience, I wish the region was stronger. But I think they, they don't want to scare off people. People who buy these hybrids, they, kinda, they want a fossil car with some hybrid, with some electric uh, capabilities. So if it, if they, if like, it works more or less like um, the electric, maybe they are like, they don't like it. But all right, so now we are on the motorway. And um, one thing I notice is that when you hammer it, almost nothing happens. Like, the electric one has 204 horsepower and 395 newton meter of torque. Uh, this one has, uh, okay, I didn't check the specs again, so I'm just putting it on the screen here, but it has less power and you can feel it. So let's hammer it. <laughs> there's like, there's this sound, nothing happened, and there came this lots of noise, and then a little bit of stuff moved, yeah. So um, I'm not sure how, I mean, um, I get the impression that they, they didn't make this like sporty enough. So in, in the i3, oh wait, sorry, in the i8 I tested, then uh, the electric motor and the fossil engine work together. So when you hammer it, they work together and you had pretty decent power output, you know? This one, doesn't seem like it and there is no sport mode or eco mode there's just one mode here I haven't found it maybe it's hidden somewhere but there's no there's no button for different drive modes uh, because in the i8 when you put the car in sport mode it will actively charge the tiny battery the 7.1 kilowatt hour battery this one uh, I, I have no control of it whether you want it to charge it or not or uh, maybe you want it like to hold state of charge I haven't found it. I, I guess it's just, it will just do whatever it needs to do. Um, so, but yeah, when you, when you like, when you hammer it, almost nothing happens. I wish uh, the, the electric motor would help a little bit more, but maybe the electric motor is not that powerful. So, uh, unlike on the i8, but yeah, like on the motorway, it feels just like a fossil car, you know, whereas uh, the electric Nero, was like damn it felt fast i got like the same impression when i draw um, a pair of e you know it was like powerful like it's almost like uh like tesla feeling you know All right let's hammer it then we have some left lane huggers here yeah yeah see welcome to norway the land of the left lane huggers <laughs> oh what do you see a tesla model x yeah let's hammer it on the left lane like a boss yeah now you guys have evidence I am guilty in what well, guilty as charged not guilty as fully charged <laughs> uh, all right. but anyway we are approaching Klofta and there I will test noise level at different speeds uh, this car is fitted with uh, 16 inch Michelin tires that is slightly better than in Korea with a full electric one I had 17 inch Michelin so 16 inch will have less noise but in Norway we have again 
a rougher tarmac. So I have this nice stretch with low traffic. I'm going to test some uh, noise here. All right, I have mounted the sound meter here and um, we have to set the car into stealth mode. All right, well, it's called EV mode. No, electric mode. All right, and then we'll drive the stretch and I'll see, uh, let's do 90. Let's see, I'm gonna do a double check here. So, uh, oh, it's, oh, it's doing, it's uh, yeah, there, there, there. So we can try 90 kilometers per hour, maybe 100 kilometers per hour, but I shouldn't drive that much faster because the stretch here is 90 kilometers per hour only. And then of course on E6, which is, I mean, we'll drive that way towards Klofta. On E6, that direction, we have way too much traffic. So the cars around us will um, clutter up the, the results. So uh, we can only do, you know, uh, 90 and 100 for now. Uh, so one thing I don't like is that when you put the car in drive and you start driving, in even in electric mode, there is, okay, well, you have creep. Of course, I'm not too fond of that, but you can't stop, I mean, you can't turn it off. You know, creep is that when you left, let off the pedal, like here, it will start moving. Uh, but when you're in pure electric, you know, electric motor has instant torque, but they, they mimic fossil cars. And when I hammer it, well, Okay, and then the <laughs> and then the, the fossil started. All right, hey, I thought you were supposed to be in EV mode here. What the heck? Okay, All right, it stopped. Good. All right, 90 kilometers per hour test. You know what? Let's include 120 kilometers per hour. Yes, on uh, Norwegian rough tarmac. Yes. Uh, let's see. The sound meter is over there. I'm gonna shut up now. Let me see me. Zoom in a bit. Wow, that's noisy. <laughs> We are now at the supercharger in the Nebenes and I well, just to show you guys here. This is just a, a Thursday and we have how many cars is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven cars charging here. But uh, I'm juicing up on AC. And uh, just for fun, I want to see how far you can drive on pure electric mode. Yeah, the ninja mode. So you see, uh, this cable that comes with, uh, with the car is just tiny, so thin. It's what, maximum 20 amp. So um, again, you know, I bet that this car has only a 3.7 kilowatt onboard charger. 7.4 kilowatt would be better because now it would take like over two hours to fully charge it uh, if it's empty. It would almost be faster just drive it because it seems like when you drive it, it will also charge up the battery. But uh, all right, um, so I will do the the 90 kilometers per hour speed test. This is the like, standard test I do because it well, again many people are like why not 120? Well, um, 90 seems to be very like. It seems to, to mimic the typical driving conditions in a mix of highway and city. So that's why I do the, the, the 90 one. It's, it's, it would try to match the VLTP range. Pretty good in some, sometimes. So, oh, noisy. Should have been a Tesla semi. So yeah, we have to wait half an hour, but let's go to the restaurant and get some waffles or something. Well, you know what? No, don't want to go to Nebenes. Nebenes is overpriced not that great food it's it's very expensive in Nebenes you get like you buy one sandwich and you pay 70 nook which is almost 10 euros if you go over there to Shell 
you can buy uh, three sandwiches for only 45 nook way better deal so um let's just leave the car here let's double check again uh, how far are we now maybe it gave me a wrong estimate uh, because of course I mean the car was power on well, it still says that ah oh, shit do we have to wait 35 minutes really really okay we are back after a bathroom break uh, where has a type 2 discharge but uh, look here 97 percent oh yes almost done and this is the food I was talking about okay I went for the box with two so the box with two uh, well, actually, it's not sandwich. Technically, sandwich is a double one, right? So you can tell that this is a single-faced sandwich. <laughs> but uh, these two cost only 29 nook. Yeah, and then if you go for the three one, it's 49 nook. So this is, this is good stuff. And the only downside is that there's so much um, so much wrapping around this. Yeah, uh, they could do, do it in a better way. Let's Let's have this one. The brown cheese, well, it's Bruno's, it's uh, goat cheese. Good stuff. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, yes, we are at 100%. Now let's reset. Uh, let me see. Accumulated info. This one. Yeah, let's reset. This one. Maybe also this one just for fun. Yeah. All right. Let's go. And then, all right, by the way. Uh, what's the temperature outside? Uh, 16 degrees Celsius. We have tailwind on the way there. And then we turn around and go back. So I have to estimate, let's say, at 55% we turn around. And uh, HVAC will be on, yes. We have been cruising for five minutes now. And uh, just to verify that we are in ninja mode. You see, we have uh, traveled 6.7 kilometers and not consumed any fuel yet. And also, if you see here, on the energy flow screen here, see that the engine is not running and we are uh, di discharging the battery. Yeah, usually I don't care about uh, screens like this, but right now it's uh, very useful. Oh, let's check something. I want to know the weight of this car. Yeah, let me see. I bet it's like 1,400, 1,500 kilo maybe. See what we got? What we got? There. Whoa, 1,660. Okay. I bet the electric version is just about 200 kilos more than this. Well, off we go then. <laughs> no, maybe I should do more of this uh, plug-in hybrid uh, range test because they are pretty easy to uh, complete. You know, uh, we are already down to 83 uh, percent, so the whole range test should take less than. Like half an hour, roughly half an hour, at least the driving part. Uh, whereas when I test EVs like Tesla or Kona, electric, I have to spend like you know, seven, eight hours to drive it. Uh, and yeah, of course, and when I run out, I don't have to worry, the, the gas engine will just kick in. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's keep going. This is it, the turning point. Uh, I couldn't find any closer turning point. We have 52%. We consume a little bit less now that we have tailwind, but uh, I guess I will run out of juice right before Nebenes, but that's fine because we have the gas engine. Yes, we can always rely on the fossil fuel. Wow, look here. Okay, we are in the tunnel, but we are past 50 kilometers. So far, and the gum says we have no range left, uh, but we still have 19% still charged. So um, I bet those 18, well, 18 now. I bet those 18% are available. Yeah, uh, we can see now. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the the gas engine to kick in, but uh, haven't heard it yet. Uh oh. You see here? Oh yes, now this indicates that we are charging, the, the fossil engine started. Yeah, so about 50 kilometers is what you can expect then from uh, a full battery. And you see, it kicked in at about 13%, so it didn't go all the way to zero. Now it's charging it up again. Uh, Alright. <laughs> Oh, but look now, when I hammer it, then it will allow to go lower. 10% now. Driving at uh, speed limit plus VAT. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
we are back in Oslo and you see now we're going to do the banana test this is what I brought this car for because I wanted to know how big the trunk space was but then I just found out that we have less space under the trunk so you know I guess we have to add at least two or maybe three banana boxes once we try on the electric version but all right let's see then what numbers we get so the first test is to see how many boxes we get in the trunk without folding the seats but with taking out that uh, room and with opening up the room under the trunk and you know what this one which is the plug-in hybrid can take six boxes wow so i3 can only take four boxes um the old nissan could take five boxes and then ionic and uh, kia soul can take six so this one can also take six one two three four five six and um, yeah so uh i don't know how many extra boxes we can get in here with the with uh, like with the electric one but maybe even eight so oh, we have to find out one day in winter okay it took a while but let's see uh, earlier results so um the smallest one was bmw the i3 with 14 boxes and then ionic 16 and then the old leaf 18 we have to test the new leaf uh and then kia soul 21 so we, how much can we swallow here well, let's let's start counting I tried my best to fit them in here. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay, let's pull some of them. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen! Let's check the front then. So let's see, there were 15, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> oh, you see, I had to take out the, the headrest, yeah. Uh, because these ones, they are like this. Whereas on uh, Kona, they are smaller. The Kona has this design on all three of them. So 20, let's, let's, let's show you here, uh, you see, I put some of them in there and uh, you can still sit in the front here. I didn't squeeze it all the way so you can't fit passengers in here. So yes, 20 then, then the question is how many more could, could we have fitted in here in the electric version? Um, it seems like it could be deep enough for maybe one or two i'm guessing 22 on the electric one so yes there you have it the banana test and some other tests with the kia nero uh plug-in hybrid <coughs> no, okay i'm i'm not too fond of the plug-in hybrid uh, it's like mm, uh, it's like it's like a compromise between like gasoline and electric like the electric range kind of sucks 50 kilometers that's you know, one tenth of the fully electric one and then you waste some space here so I mean if you want to go electric then just go pure electric and if you can't go electric then just stay with fossil for a while you know wait until one or try to get one of these yeah this one is very expensive it seems to be well we don't know the price for the pure EV yet but it could seem like the plug-in hybrid will be more expensive than the full electric or about the same price so if the price is the same then it depends on how fast kia can deliver the car so um well we don't know but anyway i think that was a fun test so hope you guys enjoyed this this will probably be the last kia video for now uh i will make some other ev video in the following days so thank you guys for watching and talk to you later